I believe I would be speaking for most of us by saying that one of the reasons we apply to study abroad is just seeking greener pastures, you know, because in our countries, it's not that we can't study in our countries. First of all, it's like, for example, I'm from Kenya. It's quite expensive to do your bachelor's and master's in Kenya. You, you, you'll pay a good amount of school fees. And in terms of employment, there are very limited opportunities in our African countries. Um, that's why most of us seek to move abroad, to get work opportunities, support your siblings and your parents back home. And I totally understand how frustrating it can be once you have gotten an opportunity like this one, you have the admission, uh, you need to accept your admission and you have this opportunity looking at you like this that I can actually move to Norway. But then the conflicting of, is it worth it paying this? amount of tuition fee. I feel like the expectations we have when we're in our countries um, concerning how life will be, how things will be when we move abroad are very different from reality, right? For example, you might think that, ah, you know what, I'm I just gonna apply to study get the student permit, move to that country, work part-time, get a job, um, maybe leave school or, you know, just walk my way through finishing the school and then finally settle. We have this beautiful picture in our heads of how things are going to pan out. And it's actually an amazing thing to be positive and to sort of have good expectations of things to turn out well. But sometimes that's not the reality. And for me, that this is something that I have come to learn by experience. You know, I was one, one of those people who are like, come, yes, I'm, 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 I want to go and study. I mean, the opportunity is there to do my master's for free. But then I had this, um, especially when I first came to Norway, my first semester, it was so hard for me to adjust in school like the whole digital school system it was quite hard for me to adjust but i had helpful friends who helped me so and at the same time i was looking for a job right so i thought finding a job will be one of the easiest things because we hear ah norway there are very many job opportunities and they are there guys they are there they are very many employment opportunities but did i know there are things that like language barrier which are going to really affect um in terms of getting these available jobs i knew there is like a different language but i didn't know the extent to which the impact and how important it is to actually have their language to be able to speak the language in order to get jobs easy that's one expectation i had right another expectation was um it's it's just gonna be easy to study and work part-time you know it's just going to school you don't have to go to school all the time you can just work as long as you will pass um in your grades you know and also that i came to realize it's not as easy as that because guys yeah education is serious they take coursework seriously so they it's a lot of group work um group act group work activities for the students practical work so for example in a semester you're supposed to have 30 credits right so those 30 credits you can choose like three different courses that are 10 credits each for each of these courses um you are attending classes every week. You have assignments and these assignments will contribute to the final grade you will get for that unit. So it's important to pass your assignments, to deliver them on time. There is time limits. So it's, it's demanding. The school itself is demanding. So to sort of balance the schoolwork and balance going to work, it, it's demanding, very demanding, and it needs a lot of discipline and of course working hard and those are not things i had anticipated of course it's not like i, I expected it will be extra easy but i had not anticipated the magnitude of how it's gonna be looking for work here in norway is not the easiest thing to do and i'm not even talking about skilled jobs i'm talking about this manual and skilled jobs that we do in terms of like jobs like cleaning housekeeping 
this kind of jobs it's not the easiest even those ones you'll find yes they need people they are look, looking they, they are advertisements for those jobs but they want people referred they prefer employing people who have been referred to that job by a person they know and can trust so for example when i was applying for my job where i work right now i mentioned someone who works there and then they call they called me for an interview and sometimes you can send out the same you can apply for the same job but if you don't have a recommendation high chances are they might not pick you they will pick someone who had the recommendation right so those are things i also didn't know um i just thought that jobs are there i am gonna apply and i'm gonna get into the job quickly quickly like this also once you get the job adjusting remember in kenya we are not used to doing this in our countries we are not used to doing this manual jobs like i'm skipping and all that so but you learn the job quickly because naturally africans we are really hard working so you will adjust into the job but then you have to balance the times they give you the jobs sometimes can conflict with the days you have school sometimes the lecturer if they notice you don't attend the classes they can use that to sanction you and you will fail that unit so you have to retake it so it's important to attend classes so you can't take jobs and forget you you came here as a student because remember when you will be renewing your visa after one year, they will also check your grades, uh, your school progression. And the, if the lecturer say, recommend that you should not be allowed to work part time for the next year because maybe you are working too much and it's affecting your studies, they won't allow you to work in the next year. So you also want to succeed in your studies and as well make money from working part-time because you have bills to pay the other thing that i did not know is that yes you've gotten a job and you can work 20 hours a week and even these jobs they know that students as you tell them you're a student most of them they know that students work 20 hours a week so like my job they were sort of um giving us the shifts ahead the days that i'm supposed to work ahead and then you can be able to at least see if this day i'll be if, if it's a must you be in school in a particular day they have put you on shift you can tell them to remove that day so you might think that you're gonna work 20 hours a week but high chances you are not going to work 20 hours a week because maybe the days you've been put to work the days you've been assigned to work in a particular week you have to be in school that particular day maybe you have an assignment that day you have group work that day right so there are days you will have to drop and there are days you might be available to work but your work have already assigned someone else that day and they won't deny that person to work because you know you are now available to work that day right but of course in some workplaces you can tell them in advance these are the days i will be available or they can show you in advance these are the days you have booked you and then you can sort of have that arrangement you can sort of um, arrange a schedule but high chances you are not even going to work 20 hours a week which then lowers the amount of money you can make in a month and you know people at home will be waiting for you to send them money there is that fulfillment that comes from just being able to support people at home and also to do something for yourself so i can't imagine after i have worked and sweat like this this these are manual jobs guys after all this and then i take that money and pay school fees and i'm already paying taxes i'm already paying transport that is so expensive it wouldn't make sense i feel like if you were to work extra hard sort of get as many jobs as you can to sustain you and to enable you to pay the tuition fee would end up being so draining emotionally for someone because i mean you want to have money for your savings but trust me guys it would be like impossible to have savings if you're paying this ridiculous amount of tuition fee and paying bills hey no way it's so tiring doing these manual jobs yet they are the only jobs you can do because 
it's not that you can't qualify for other jobs nice jobs like receptionist or a cool job that is not so tiring physically but then such jobs need the language do you have the language no we don't have the language so you end up just taking the jobs that don't require english ah norwegian which are then the manual jobs and of course this could have been different if for example you had gone to an english speaking country like uk or australia where you would also or canada where you'd also need to pay tuition fee but at least there the chances of you getting a job are higher because there are no language restrictions because everyone is speaking english so for for example for someone like me i was i'm a professional makeup artist right if I can have my career in Norway as a makeup artist and make good money from it. But it's it's so hard for me to get a job in, for example, a makeup store because of the language barrier. So I'm personally learning the language because I want to increase my chances, you know, and I also want to get good jobs, which would require me to have the language. Learning this language, I'm, I'm of course also paying for it. You can learn the language from school, yes, but the course in school is not that detailed so in, in because once you learn you need to take an exam and you need to pass that exam right and i feel like that level you need to have extra classes so i pay for norwegian classes those are extra cost so i feel like it would be better for someone to apply to study in a country that has no extreme language limitations and also a country that has higher options of staying back of converting your visa from a student visa let's say to a, a work visa moving to another country opens up your mind it broadens your perspective it makes you see life in a way you were not seeing it before even though in your country you thought you know things trust me when you move to another country your mind your perspective opens up in a very amazing way you get to see opportunities that you didn't even think were possible or you it's it's I would advise anyone, even though you're not moving forever, even though it's just one month of visiting a country abroad, just do it. It will change your perspective. If you really want to move abroad, if you really want to 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 seek greener pastures abroad, I would say put a lot of effort. Find out which scholarships can I apply, which um schools compare compare tuition fee between schools find out how much is it to study for this program in canada how much is it in australia what are the rules for students in australia what are the rules in canada what are the rules in whatever country sort of compare and go for what, whichever you feel um will work best for you and also compare like in this country how long is the job seeking visa how how many years do i need before i can apply for permanent residency if you, in case you wanted to stay in that country i feel like those are very important details that you need to consider before moving to a country even though you got the opportunity because i remember before i came to nori i had an admission to move to the u.s then i compare the fact that um moving to the u.s i'll pay tuition fee when i was coming to nori it was free for me in Norway so I of course chose this one because I wouldn't have the burden of tuition fee so I feel like those are really important things and I feel like opportunities are there it's just that sometimes we are not as aggressive as we should because trust me people like Nigerians they go hard for these opportunities they go hard for these opportunities so I also feel like it's important when you see an opportunity, run with it. Once you see such a video, do your further research. Find out what's required of me. I require a motivation letter. What course do I want to apply? Have your options ready. Know what you need. If you need um language, language test, don't feel like it's a lot of money going for the language test do it do it and have it even though you won't use it for that particular one trust me you better have it than not but than having an opportunity that you can get but then miss out on that opportunity because you don't have your ielts you see so 
once you see such an opportunity start preparing let's say the admission even like the finland vocational school program that i shared with you guys the admission um the application starts in like august now you should be preparing yourself how you will write your motivation letter start preparing your cv in case you need to volunteer prepare those things have them ready such that when the application opens you are confident of you have all that is required if it's a cv your cv is polished if it's a motivation letter it is polished trust me guys just those things will get you many opportunities i'm so proud of some of you who are telling me they got admission in like three schools i know people who got admission to come study in norway right now for in like three different schools you see in, imagine if you had not applied you wouldn't know that you would actually be qualified for such but now you know now you know so don't be discouraged by this whole tuition fee now apply for scholarships apply even to other schools there are schools like in Luxembourg. Luxembourg tuition fee is not expensive. And that's one of the best countries in Europe. It's actually one of the richest countries. So, and the tuition fee is not expensive in Luxembourg. And also like their transportation is free. So, but those are opportunities you really need to go out of the box to seek, you know, to do your research and find them. But like i'll share about luxembourg i'll share about erasmus mondos stay tuned subscribe if you have not subscribed so that you won't miss out on these opportunities share the video with people you think will benefit from it like and thank you so much for watching i will see you on the next one Kwaheri.